Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. So today is currently November 30th, and I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving, so I want to get that out of the way. Happy holidays, everyone. Hope everything's going great for you. And I'm really excited today, because this, this has been a really good week for me, I'm not going to lie. So today, I'm on my way to the city to not go see a concert or anything like that, but I'm going back to my Broadway roots, as it were, right now. Um, <laughs> and I am finally, for the first time ever, seeing my favorite musical, live on stage and my favorite musical is sunset boulevard let me let me tell you something guys i love this musical it's my favorite musical it's my favorite angela actually okay my favorite angela weber musical is joseph the amazing tech and color dream coat but this is my favorite musical of all time um it's i this i i don't even know where to begin on to why i love sunset so much but I was very disappointed I couldn't go see the revival when that happened, and this is this is finally me taking initiative of it. It is currently being done by a company called Porchlight Music Theater, and last year I saw their production of Gypsy, which was absolutely incredible, and I loved every second of it. So I couldn't be more thrilled to go see Sunset Boulevard there, and I've had a couple friends that have seen it already, and they loved it. Um, and the cool thing about this place is just the way it's set up, which I hope I can get a little video of when I get there, but also, um, okay, what was I going to say? The, um, the actress who they have playing, um, Norma Desmond, her name is Hollis Resnick, and I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and I've seen her before in Sister Act, but if you live in the Chicago area, she's like the quintessential Patti Lapone or something like that you would think of, of the Chicago area. She's... High art, high class, beautiful actress. Uh, she was great in Sister Act when I saw her years ago, so I'm hoping, um, she, well, I know she's going to be great in this. She's gotten fantastic reviews, so there's that. Um, so, yeah, I'm about to leave, head out there, and I, I'm i excited, guys, because I, I really do love this show so much. I've, I've used songs for, I've sung both of Norma's main songs for it in my, um, um, they're in my theater book, like my song book. Um, well, actually, not one of them. Just as if we never say goodbye. I used it in the show I did this past um, year, and I, I love, I just love this show, so I'm really excited. So come along with me, and I have a funny story later about how I'm hoping that I got the ticket that I got. So I'll see you guys then. Hey everyone, so here I am and it's currently Monday, so it's been two whole days since I saw Sunset Boulevard at Porch Light and here I am finally giving the end of this video the review. So where do I begin? So first of all, I got my ticket and this is how I did it and I think I, I find myself so clever for it. Um, so I got it through the company Hot Ticks, which is like Chicago's, um, I think they're also everywhere else, but I just know that they're for sure in Chicago. Um, and it's like discounted tickets for certain performance dates and all that. So the tickets for um, Porchlight retail on their site go for about 66 to 70 almost. And they had them on Hot Ticks for $33. And um, I think with taxes, it comes out to 39 But it's random seating, so you don't know your seat until you get there the day of the show. So I bought my ticket a week before um, this past Saturday. And what I did was is I emailed Porchlight, and I was like, hey, um, so I am a big fan of Sunset Boulevard, and I just bought my ticket with Hot Ticks. If at all possible, um, when my seat is selected, if at all possible, could it be front row um, for the theater? And then they emailed me back and they were like, oh, no, we don't really see a problem with that. Um, yada, yada, yada. And they were like, thank you for coming. And I was like, thank you. So I got my front row seat for Sunset at Porchlight. And let me tell you, this theater is so cute. And I think I'm going to go back to the original seating I had because when I saw Gypsy there um, about a year ago, I was front row of their little balcony. And I think their balcony is only like three or four rows. But just the way that the theater is set up, it was a perfect, perfect view. And I really, truly, um, I think I liked that view a little more, even though front row for Sunset Boulevard for my first time, I couldn't pass that up. So where do I begin? So I'm sitting and all of a sudden, all the people around me are very upset because as I mentioned, Hollis Resnick is a big name in the Chicago theater circuit and she was out 
um, this past Saturday, which I was like, oh, I honestly, like this was my first reaction. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool because I've never seen an understudy for a regional production before. I've seen, this is professional regional. I don't mean that in a bad way, but like the only time I've ever seen an understudy is like for a national tour, like a legitimate national tour. And this is where, this is where things get interesting. So Sunset Boulevard, this, this production recently extended in um, Chicago and the standby for Norma who was on that day is not the standby that's listed in the program. Um, I, I forgot the name of the standby that's listed in the program, but the lady who I saw her name is, and I'm so sorry if I butcher any of these names, McKinley Carter. And I guess um, from what I've read, she's um, well known in the Chicago theater circuit as well. But I don't know if she just joined the production in midway to be the standby or what. Um, but kudos to her because people can be really bitchy when a standby or an understudy is on. And honestly, I was like, you know what? I don't care who I'm seeing. Um, Hollis Resnick is, you know, well known. And I did see her in Sister Act, but I was there for the show. I wasn't necessarily there for a certain person. Um... And I have to say, I don't know if this was like one of her first shows or what, like, you know, since it had been extended, um, but, um, what was it? McKinley, um, you were fantastic. Um, there, it was a very, um, I would say her performance reminded me of three very specific Normas, because I do know my Broadway Norma Desmonds. And she reminded me almost of a mix between Elaine Page, Petula Clark, and Linda Balgord. If you could mix all three of them together, their Normas, I feel like that was what her Norma was. Her um, vocals were, um, she wasn't a um, a Betty Buckley Beltress, as I would say. It was definitely a much more soprano take on the role, which I had honestly really hadn't heard since Linda Balgord. And I was, I was like, oh, okay, this is, I'm not gonna lie, I, I think, you know, being me, the Betty Buckley fan, I love the belty Norma, like that crazy belt, but her soprano was just, oh, it was so lovely. And the, I thought, I just loved her entire interpretation of the role. She brought a much more human aspect to Norma Desmond. And I think that a lot of people can really bring camp to it, which I don't mind, I'm not gonna lie. But I think there's a lot to say in someone who doesn't bring camp to it and treats the role very seriously. And I appreciate that as much too. Um, she was she was really good. And the one thing, this is only something I would notice, it's not a criticism, but I did notice um, two lyric flubs. I, one was in With One Look and I forgot what it was, but it was in As If We Never Said Goodbye. And like I said, I, I know this show pretty well. And she said, um, when, um, the cameras are burning and the line is the cameras are turning. It was so minor, but I was like, ha, huh, I noticed that. And it was just a me thing. Um, but, oh my God, she was so, so good. And I, just a really, really good performance. And I wanted to talk about the one thing I felt bad for her for, because the people next to me noticed this too, is that they would have movie posters that would come up on the sides of the thing. And it would be like Norma Desmond, or no, it was, it was portraits of just Norma for her house. That's what it was. And the portraits were of Hollis Resnick <laughs> and not of McKinley. Um, so I felt, I felt kind of sad that they didn't have a plan B um, portrait setting for that, but you know, what are they gonna do? You know, they, I'm sure they only had so much time to put this together. But I wanna talk about this production and they did a couple of different things that I've noticed um, has become um, different. So I think one of the major changes I would say is that they took two things that were mostly done in the new revival. So the use of a young Norma. So they used a young Norma in her Joan of Arc-esque like clothing who would do like ballet scenes. It happened in the very beginning right before it, it must have been 5 a.m. And then um, during um, the, oh my god, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Um, new Ways to Dream. Um, there were scenes where it was like Norma, the ballet movie, silent movie star, which I thought was um, really cute. And one thing that they did that I, I was like, wow, why has no one ever done this? Um, was during With One Look where she's like, still out there in the dark. And then it's the swelling orchestral music. They put um, the entire ensemble in a choral position, like, you know, eyeing over that. And I was like, oh, because they're the people in the dark, but they're singing along to Norma's gorgeousness. Um, and what was the, okay. So this is where I noticed the biggest change um, It was the ending. So if you're really familiar with the ending, she shoots Joe, spoiler, if you <laughs> hadn't seen the musical already, she shoots Joe and then normally the, it would go black and then the reporters would come out and they would be like, um, 
you know, Norma, De as Dawn breaks over the murder house, Miss Norma Desmond, and then she comes out again and she does like a crazy montage of like her little moments in the show. So what they changed was, is that she shoots Joe and immediately she goes crazy and starts like doing all the lines. She's like, silent music, I don't know why I'm frightened. And I was like, oh, that's different, that's cool, I like that. Um, and, but here, so then she leaves and then the reporters come and when she comes out, it just starts with a Max, where am I? And then it kind of transitions back into the normal thing. Now here is the one complaint I have about the production. And this is, it's so minor, but just me. I, let me tell you, this musical has my favorite ending of a musical of all time. And the ending, they changed it a bit. So she, how it normally ends is that she says, um, I'm ready for my close-up. And then there's a swelling orchestra section that's about 15 to 20 seconds of her moving and, you know, like, looking at the cameras. They cut that swelling music, and it went straight into, so it was, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille, and then it was, this time I'm staying, I'm staying for good. And, um, <laughs> they cut the gorgeous musical interlude, which I love. Let me, I... I love the music of the show so much. Um, so they cut that. That was the only thing that this production did that I didn't like. And that's just because I love that ending so much. I loved the ch other changes, but that I just, I'm sorry. I love that music too much to not um, say it. Sorry. Um, but this is also what I'm going to talk about, the cast. So I'm going to start. I already talked about McKinley. You know, great. Um, so we need to talk about, um, okay, Billy Rude was our... Um, Oh my God, Joe, Joe, right? Yeah, Joe. <laughs> I was the police telling me I'm saying the name right. Um, he was really good. Um, I would. This is what I wanted to say, and this is more about his looks. This man literally looks as though Aaron Tveit and Finn Whitcock from you know American Horror Story, if they got together and had a child, this is what this man would look like. He literally looked like the spawn of those two men. Um, but he was really good. Um, a really, really good Joe. Um, I feel like a lot of people think Joe is just kind of, there's not much to him. And I think he really, he acted the hell out of it. And his singing voice was incredible too. Um, I wanted to say um, Larry Adams, another great Max. I think Max, if you're a baritone and a good actor, you got Max in the bag. And he did great. He really, there was a lot of sadness to his Max, I feel too. Because I feel, it. this story is kind of weird when you really think about it, but... Um, he just, he did a really good job. And then I wanted to talk about Michelle. Oh God, I'm going to butcher this last name. Lotto. It's L-A-U-T-O. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Um, she was really good. Um, and I, I loved her because she was a, a Hispanic Betty Schaefer. I'm, pr I'm, I'm assuming she's Hispanic or, um, um, Latino, Latina, Latina. That's what I want to say. Latina, um, uh, Betty Schaefer, I love that. I love bringing different races into things because we've had enough of white people. <laughs> um, and she was really good. And she also works with the kids um, aspect of Porchlight where they do stuff for kids. And she seems like she's really into that too. So good for you. Get kids into theater. That's what I say. I don't even really like kids, but get them into theater. Get them into something that's good. Um, and then um, who else to talk about? Oh, um, well, that's really it for the main cast. Everyone in the ensemble was really, really good. Everyone was perfectly cast. Everyone was, it was just a really, really good production. And I really recommend that you see it. Um, it's here till December 8th. So there's not really much time left. And I'm posting this literally the week before it closes. Um, yeah, uh, you know, um, yeah, I, there, there's just not enough good to say about, well, there is a lot of good to say about, I can't say any more good about it. Um, it was, it was just a really, really good production. And it's so nice that they're doing this show. I really wish more people would do this show. I think it's such a good musical. Um, and again, yeah, and props to, um, to McKinley for whatever rehearsal amount you had. Um, I, I don't think it was a lot because I don't think, I think she was brought into this production midway. I don't know. I don't know anything. Um, but if you didn't have a lot of rehearsal, that's great. You were fantastic. Even if you did a lot of have a lot of rehearsal, oh my god, amazing! Um, so, yeah, go see it if you can get the chance. It's at Porchlight Theater in Chicago. You can get tickets at their website, or maybe Hot Tick still has um, tickets. I'm not sure, but definitely, t if you can, go see it. It was a really good production. I wish I could go again, but I unfortunately just cannot afford to go again. Um, so, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm not sure the next show I'll be seeing. Um, 
Good. You never know. Um, but yeah, Sunset Boulevard, my literal favorite musical. Thank you guys for finally giving me the opportunity to see it live. So thank you guys and happy holidays.